So in this video today, we're going to look at forming a bridge when you've got these tricky shots and the white is very close to the cushion like this. So I've got this shot on the black here and my white is very close to the cushion. So that means that I can't form my normal bridge and get my hand nice and comfortably on the table. So in this video, we're going to look at how to form a nice solid bridge and have more success at potting these tricky shots. Now you often find yourself with the cube ball quite close to the side cushion like this and it means that we're not able to form our normal nice solid bridge on the table. Now a common mistake that I see players making with these shots is that they try to form their normal bridge but they try to do it on the cushion here. Now this is bad for a couple of reasons. The first reason is, is that it's just not very stable when you're trying to form a normal bridge on the cushion here. The cushion isn't really wide enough to get your hands spread out and get your bridge nice and firm and stable on the table. And the second reason is, is that when you bridge off the cushion like this, your cue is then coming down to the white ball at an angle. And it's almost as if you're playing a slight swerve shot on the white ball. And it's very easy then to just get a little bit of unintentional side on the white ball and you'll push the white offline and you'll miss the object ball. So let's have a look at some alternative ways of bridging off the cushion and some things to think about when you're faced with these shots. Right, so we know that we need something a little bit more stable and something that's going to help us to keep the cue a bit flatter to the bed of the table. So we don't want the cue too jacked up at the back because then it's easy to get unintentional side spin on the white ball. So there are two main bridges that the professionals use when they're bridging off the cushion. So let's have a look at both of those bridges then. So the first one that you can use is to guide the cue using your first finger and then the thumb. And you put the cue in between your finger and thumb and that just helps to guide the cue and to keep the cue online. So we form that first one by getting down to the table and just resting your hand nicely on the table. So it's something like that with the edge of your hand just on the table like that so it's nice and comfortable and nice and firm. And then you'll use your finger at the side of the cue and your thumb at the other side of the cue to guide the cue and to keep the cue in a nice straight line. And now the second bridge that a lot of professionals use when bridging off the cushion is to use a loop bridge. So instead of using the finger and the thumb, they use the first two fingers and they use those to form a little loop over the top of the cue and keep the cue online. So it's formed in a very similar way. You're going to rest your hand on the table like that, but this time your thumb goes underneath the cushion and he's just pushing against the cushion for a bit of stability. And then your fingers are either side of the cue and guide the cue and keep the cue nicely online. Now, personally for me, I find the loop bridge a little bit more difficult than using the bridge where I use my finger and thumb to guide the cue. And the problem I have with the loop bridge is that I just find it a little bit more difficult to see the line of the shot because my fingers tend to get in the way because my head is quite low down and I'm trying to sight the shot between the cue ball and the object ball. So that's why I actually prefer to use my finger and my thumb and have my hand nice and flat to the table I just feel for me it just allows me to see the line of the shot properly and see exactly where the cue is going. Now there are another couple of things that are really important when you're bridging off the cushion like this. So the first thing is, is that we still do our pre-shot routine and we approach the shot properly. So if I was playing to pot this black now, I would still be standing behind the line of the shot and then you would do your walking and get down to the shot properly just as you would on any other shot when you've got your hand on the table. Now, the second thing is, is your grip hand at the back of the cue. So that's where I normally grip the cue. I hold my cue about there and I've just got about an inch and a half, two inches sticking out the back there. Now, if I get down to this shot and I keep my grip in the same place, you can just see now that my um, back arm there at the back is nothing like vertical. It's almost fully extended. And that's because the distance between the V of my bridge hand there and then the tip of the cue at the white ball has been drastically reduced because we're cueing off the cushion. So on a normal shot, I've got about 10 or 11 inches of cue from the V of my bridge hand to the cue tip where it meets the white. So because that's been reduced, you're also going to need to shuffle your hand forward on the back of the cue so that your arm goes nice and vertical. And I've talked about this in other videos and it's important because 
If you're already fully extended, it means you can't then do a nice controlled backswing and have a nice um, smooth forward delivery. So you need to get your arm, even when you're queuing off the cushion, so that it's nice and vertical, pointing nice and straight down to the floor, so that you can do a nice backswing and complete the shot properly. Now sometimes you find yourself where the white isn't just close to the cushion, but it's absolutely dead against the cushion like this. So my white is right up against this side cushion here. So with these shots, you can't really use the loop bridge and you'll need to use the bridge where you've got your finger and your thumb guiding the cue each side. So it's the same technique as normal. You want to stand behind the shot, make sure that you're lining up the shot properly, walk into the shot, and then on this one, it's really, really important here that you keep your head nice and still. Now, one more point about these. We talked about not jacking the cue up at the back because then you're playing a swerve shot on the white. When the white is very close to the cushion, as it is on this shot, you may need to elevate the back of the cue just a little fraction so you can see a little bit more of the white and just hit down on the white very slightly so that you don't miss cue over the top of the white. So if I just get down to play this one here, it's the same bridge with the finger and the thumb each side and you're just trying to keep nice and still, keep everything still on the shot. Now one more bridge I wanted to talk about in this video that doesn't crop up quite so often is when you're close to the cushion like this, sometimes you do want to use a bit of extra cue speed and a little bit of extra power. So in this example here, I've got a red that I can attempt to pot into the bottom left hand corner and bring the white in behind the black and then the white back up into bulk. Now with the other two bridges that we discussed in this video, um, you don't end up having much cue sticking out from the V of your bridge hand to the tip of the cue. And what that means is, is that when we want to generate a little bit more power, it's difficult because you can't pull the cue back very far. So what I tend to do on these shots is I'll actually use my normal bridge hand almost, but I'll rest the fingertips of my bridge hand against the edge of the table. And I push them firmly into the end of the table and try and keep my bridge hand as solid as I possibly can. And then what that allows me to do is use my normal V with my thumb against my first finger so that I've got plenty of cue then that I can pull back all the way to the V and accelerate the cue smoothly when I need that extra power. So as usual, I hope you found this video useful. We've got some nice tips there with a couple of examples of some different bridges you can use when you're queuing off the cushion, and then some important points about approaching the shot properly like you would on any other shot, and making sure that you move that grip hand forward so that you've got lots of room to pull your cue back and do a nice smooth delivery. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give the video a like, and if you want to see more instructional tutorials just like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers.